Oh my goodness! My folks are never coming for me, so I gotta go find them. Annie, you're crazy. Miss Hannigan, I'll catch you and give you the paddle. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. Okay, I'm ready. Wish me luck. Good luck, Good luck Annie. Annie. Turn around. I said turn around. Now, what do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Rotten orphan. I am not an orphan. My mother and father left a note saying that they loved me and they were coming back for me. That was 1922. Is 1933. Get up! Now, for this one, shenanigans, you'll all get down on your knobby little knees and clean these floors so they shine like the top of the Chrysler building. But it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Get to work. Yes, Miss Harrigan. Now! Why any kid would want to be an orphan, I'll never know! It's a hard knock life for us. It's a hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's a hard knock life. Got no folks to speak of, so it's a hard knock row. We hope cotton blankets, set a roll, empty bellies, set a full. It's a hard knock life. Don't it seem like the wind is always howling? Don't it seem like there's never any light? What's a day? Don't you want another talent? It's, it's easier it's than putting up a fight. No one's there when your dreams at night get creepy. No one cares if you grow or in the street. No one drives when your eyes get wet and weepy. From, From the crying, you would think this place would sink. Oh! Empty belly life. Rotten smelly life. Full of sorrow life. No tomorrow life. Santa calls me now. Santa Claus, what's that? Who? No one cares for you, a smidge, when you're in an orphanage. It's a hard knock life. 
morning, children. Good morning, Good morning Miss Hannigan. Well, I, I love you, Miss Hannigan. I love you, Miss Hannigan. You, what are you doing in there? Nothing. You, get her out of there. Your days are numbered. All right, breakfast. Hot mush, yuck. No, not hot mush. Cold mush. Ah. After your mush, you'll go straight to your sewing machine. There's a whole order of dresses to finish if you have to work straight through to midnight. Yes, Miss Hannigan. Now, line up. Laundry, laundry man. Morning, Goggles. Morning, kids. Clean sheets once a month, whether you need them or not. Hey, Aggie, how's the prettiest gal south of 14th Street? Oh, Mr. Bundles, get out of here with that laundry. So long, gorgeous, and Merry Christmas. Annie, you call these floors clean? place looks like a pigsty. Annie? Annie? Annie ain't here! What do you mean Annie ain't here? She went with Mr. Bundles in the laundry cart. Mr. Bundles! Police! Police! No more hard knock life for Annie. Lucky duck she got away. But we're gonna have to pay. Gonna get our faces slapped. Gonna get our knuckles wrapped. It's the hard knock life. It's the hard knock life. It's the hard knock life. Apples, apples, two for a nickel. Excuse me, ma'am, but could you donate an apple to the orphan's picnic? Sure, why not? No one's buying them anyway. Gee, thanks, ma'am. Say, can I the orphan's picnic? Soon as I take a bite. Hey, you, you seen any stray mutts around here? No, ma'am. Good, then they must be running wild over to Astor Place. Hey. Here's one they didn't get. They're after you, ain't they? Well, they're after me too. But don't worry. I ain't gonna let them get you or me. Everything's gonna be fine for the both of us. If not today, well, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be some. Just thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely I just stick out my chin and grin and say The sun will come out tomorrow So you gotta hang on till tomorrow Come what may Tomorrow You're always You're always a day away Hey you, little girl, come here Yes, officer? That dog there, ain't he a stray? A stray? Oh no, officer, he's my dog. Okay then. What's his name? Uh, his name? Uh, his name is S Sandy. Right, that's it. I call him Sandy because of his nice sandy color. Let's see an answer to his name. Well, you see, officer, I just got him and- Call him! Here, boy. Sandy. Come here, Sandy. Good Sandy, good old Sandy. 
next time you take him out, I want to see him on a leash and with a license, or else he goes to the pound. Yes, sir. I understand. And I get along with you before you catch your death of the cold in this weather. Oh, I don't mind the weather. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just sneak out my chin and grin. Hannigan, is it? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Ward of the 17th Precinct. We found your runaway. Oh, thank you so much, officer. She was in one of them Hoovervilles over to the river with a bunch of bums. They weren't bums. Oh, poor little pumpkin out there in the freezing cold with just this thin little sweater. I hope you didn't catch influenza. <sighs> Thank you again, officer. All in the line of duty. And you, don't let me ever hear that you run away from this nice lady again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, officer. You. The next time you walk out that door, it'll be 1953. Well, are you glad to be back? Huh? Yes, Miss Hannigan. Liar! What is the one thing I've always taught you? Never tell a lie! Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Yeah? I'm Grace Fell, private secretary to Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks? The billionaire? Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays at his home. Oh, what sort of orphan did he have in mind? Well, she should be friendly and intelligent. Mississippi, capital M I double S I double S I double P I, Mississippi. And cheerful. Ah ha ha ha. You shut up. 
And how old? Age doesn't really matter. Oh, say eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, eleven will be perfect. And they almost forgot. Mr. Warbucks prefers red-headed children. Eleven? A redhead. We don't have any orphans around here like that. What about this child right here? Uh, Annie? No, you can't have, you can have any orphan here, but not Annie. Annie, would you like to spend the next two weeks in Mr. Warbucks' house? I would love to. She is staying here. You're not having any, you can have any orphan, but this Annie. Perhaps I should alert the Board of Orphans and... Oh, if it's Annie you want, it's Annie you get. It's Annie I want. Oh, boy! If I'll get her coat, I'll take her along right now. She ain't got no coat. I'm gonna buy her one. Oh, boy! Come along, Annie. Mr. Warbucks' limousine is outside. Oh, boy! I can hardly believe it! She can hardly believe it! Hey, kids! I'm getting out for Christmas. I'll write to you. Bye, Bye Annie! Someday I'll land in the nut house with all the nuts and the squirrels. There I'll stay tucked away till the prohibition of Good afternoon, Miss Farrell. Good afternoon, Drake. Everyone. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, Miss. Has Mr. Warbucks arrived yet? No, but we're expecting him any minute. Do you really live here? Or is this a train station? We really live here. Now, would you all come here for a moment, please? This is Annie. She'll be with us for Christmas. Annie, this is Evelyn. Hi, everyone. There's a new coat, Miss. Will I get it back? Of course, dear. Now, what would you like to do first? The floors. I'll scrub them first, then I'll get to the windows, and... Annie, you won't have to do a thing. You're our guest. For the next two weeks, we're going to have a swell time. So say we pick out all your clothes. The friends are back hard, no blue eyes. Your bath is dried by Mrs. Greer. Soap, no bubbles, I think. Annette comes in to make your bed. Soap, no fat sheets, I think. I think I'm gonna like it here. When you wake, ring for Drake. Drake will bring your tray. When you're through, Mrs. Pew comes to take it away. That's okay, I haven't got me anyway. No pain, no bear, do lift my dear. We have a fun request. He put us to the test. I know I'm gonna like it here. Used to room in a tomb where I'd sit and freeze. Get me now. It's good to be home. How's your flight from Chicago? Not bad. Only took 11 hours. Grace? Yes, sir. Messages? President Roosevelt wants to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Mr. Warbucks. All right. Good to see you all again. Sir. sir. Drake? Yes, sir. Dismiss the staff. Quickly, everyone. And Grace, if you'll get your notebook. 
Who is that? This name, Mr. Robux. The orphan who will be with us for Christmas. That's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphans, so I chose a girl. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Any, huh? Any what? Oh, I'm just Annie, Mr. Warbuck, sir. I haven't got any last name. I'm sorry I'm not a boy. Not at all. I couldn't be happier. Grace, we'll start with the figures and the iron ore shipments from Toledo to... What are we supposed to do with this child? It is her first night here, sir. Well, Annie, I guess we ought to do something special on your first night here. Would you like to go to a movie? Gosh, Mr. Orbux, I've never been to one. Then you'll go to the Roxy, and then an ice cream soda at the Rumpelmeyer's, and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Golly! Grace, forget about the dictation for tonight. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. Yes, sir. Oh, gee. Something the matter, Annie? It's just that, well, I thought you were going to take me. Oh, no. I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight. Oh, gee. Now, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks. And when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation... Oh, sure. I know. That's okay, Mr. Orbux. Drake. Yes, sir? Get our coats. Oh, gee. Which car have we been wanting, sir? The Dewinsburg. No, wait. This child's been cooped up in an orphanage. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Why not? It's only 45 blocks. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, smell those bus fumes. There's no air like the air of New York City. Hurry up, slow pokes. We gotta get to the Roxy before the prices change. NYC, the shimmer of Times Square, the pulse, the beat, the dance. NYC, you might say that I'm square, but love, I come alone. Quiet down there. Immediate seating. There is immediate seating. Popcorn. What do you say, some popcorn? I had no popcorn in sense.
time to check in with Helen. Once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove that just because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life need not be over. God, I hope not. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. Yeah? Oh, good afternoon. What's the matter? Warbucks fed up with Annie already? On the contrary, Miss Hannigan, this has to be signed and sent back to the Board of Orphans no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow. What for? Because Miss Warbucks is so taken with Annie that he wants to adopt her. Annie? The daughter of a millionaire? The daughter of a billionaire. <coughs> Would you excuse me for a moment? Got any more wonderful news? Merry Christmas, Miss Hannigan. Oops, pardon me, Blondie. Hi, sis. Long time no see. Rooster? <laughs> they let you out of prison? <laughs> what were you in for this time? Some old geezer said I swinger him out of 1100 bucks. Why do you say that? <laughs> because the rooster swindled him out of 1100 bucks. Sis, I'd like you to be a friend of mine from Twisic City. Rooster, do me a favor, get out of here. So it's a blondie I bumped into my way in. She looked like she had a couple of dollars. She works for that Oliver Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks? Annie, one of the orphans here, is getting adopted by him. Uh, crummy orphan. Yeah, living in a lap of luxury while the two Hannigan kids get in from the skids. It ain't fair how we scrounge for three or four bucks. While she gets war bucks, the little brat. It ain't fair, this here life is driving me nuts. While we get peanuts, she's living fat. Maybe she holds the key, that little lady, to get more bucks instead of less. Maybe we fix the game with something shady. Where would that put us? Give you one guess. Yes. yes. President. No, I'm not asking for your help, but I'm telling you that you've got to do something. We'll talk about it on... Friday. Friday. Listen, Mr. President, why don't we bury the hatchet and you and Miss Roosevelt come over for supper Christmas Eve? You will? Wonderful. Goodbye, Mr. President. Grace, find out what Democrats eat. Yes, sir. The package from Tiffany? Arrived this morning. Fine. I'm going to give it to her and then tell her I want to adopt her. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. Get her in here. Yes, sir. Hello? Annie, can we have a man-to-man -man talk? You're sending me back to the orphanage, right? Of course not. Annie, I was born into a very poor family, and both my parents died before I was ten. So that day, I made a promise to myself. A promise that one day, one way or another, I was going to be rich, very rich. I was in Tiffany's yesterday and picked this up for you. For me? Gee, thanks, Mr. Warbucks. 
Oh, gee. It's a silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old broken one you always wear, and I said to myself, I'm gonna get that kid a nice new locket. Here, we'll just take the old one off. No, I don't want a new one. Annie, what's wrong? This locket. My mom and dad left it when they left me at the orphanage. And a note, too. They're coming back for me. I know I'm real lucky being here with you for Christmas, but the one thing I want in all the world is to have my own mother and father and to be like other kids with folks of my own. <laughs> Mr. Wilkes will find your mother and father. He has put everyone in his organization on the job. He has pulled every political string there is to pull. Up to and including the White House. Annie, give me your locket. But Miss Dora Bucks. I understand, but it may be our best clue in tracing your mother and father. Okay, then maybe they should have my note too. Just you wait, Annie. In a couple of days, you may be meeting your mother and father. Really? Really. Oh boy, I gotta write a letter to the kids about this. Please come get your baby, baby. Thank you, Annie, and welcome to America's favorite radio program, The Occident Hour of Smiles, starring your old softy, Bert Healy. And good evening, Oliver Warbucks. It's nice of you to drop by. Good evening, Bert Healy. It's nice to be here. Now, Oliver Warbucks, I understand that you have something to tell the folks at home about Little Annie. Yes, Bert Healy. I'm now conducting a coast-to-coast, -coast, nationwide search for Annie's parents. Furthermore, I am offering a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove that they're Annie's parents? Wow. So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, write to Oliver Warbucks, care of this station. Thank you, Oliver Warbucks. Thank you, Bert Healy. Well, I see by the old clock on the wall that another of our Thursday night get togethers has gone by faster than you can say Occident. Yes, this is your old softy, Mrs. Healy's boy, Bert, saying, until. Next time, next week, same station. Good night. Jean, Annie, coast to coast on the radio. She's famous. I wish I was on the radio. Me too. Who wants to be on the dumb old radio? I do. So for all you Our Smiles families, this is Bert Healy saying, your style, but brother, you're never fully dressed without a smile. Your clothes may be faux from a leaf, they stand out a mile, but brother, you're never fully dressed without a smile. 
up. Annie was on the radio. Yeah, I heard it. Next thing you know, she'll be in the movies. Now get to bed. $50,000. 50000 What I couldn't do with $50,000. Excuse us, ma'am. Are you the lady who runs this orphanage? Yeah. Ma'am, was you working here 11 years ago? Yeah. Well, we had terrible troubles back then and had to leave our baby on the front stoop. Our little girl. Our little Annie. You're Annie's parents? Where'd you say you are from again? A small town up in Canada with lots of chickens and geese and ducks and roosters. cock a doodle doo Roaster? I never would have known it was you in a hundred years. Full jaggy, and now we're going to fool Warbucks, too. Get ourselves 50,000 big ones. But we need your help in getting information on the kid. What's in it for me? Three-way split. Half. Half? Half. Fine, half. But we need your help in getting information on the kid. Hmm. The kid's the problem. What are you going to do with her after? No problem. When I want something to disappear, it disappears for good. Then we'll get the kid, get the money, and blow this crummy town. Where? Is that for this? Yeah. Well, Miss Farrell? I'm sorry, Annie. I've spoken to more than a thousand people claiming to be your parents, but they're all liars and fakes. Oh, gee. Are you certain? Yes, sir. None of them knew about the locket. I'm so sorry. I was sure somebody was going to be my mother and father. Mr. Robux, this just came in from the FBI special messenger. Ah, uh, finally. Agent Gunderson has located the manufacturer of Annie's Locket in Utica, New York. Oh boy! Over 90,000 were made and sold. Oh gee. Annie, I'm afraid the FBI doesn't think there's a chance in a million of tracing our parents through the locket. That's I'm sorry. Okay. You did your best. Anyway, I guess a kid can get along pretty well without folks. You didn't turn out so bad. Do you have those legal papers I gave you the other day? Right here. Annie, I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no. If I can't have my real mother and father, there's no one in the world I'd rather have for a father than you, Mr. Robux. Annie, this isn't just going to be an adoption. This is going to be a celebration. And you can have anyone in the world you want to be there. Who would you like? Well, I guess I'd like Miss Farrell here and Mr. Drake, and Mrs. Pugh, and, well, everybody here. Drake. Yes, sir? Tell the staff to get spiffed up. They're going to be at Annie's adoption party. Yes, sir. Oh, and the kids. It'll be way past their bedtime by now. But tell you what, we'll have everyone over for supper, a Christmas party, tomorrow. Miss Hannigan, too? Mm, why not? Together at last, together forever, we're tying the knot, then 
mind ever can sever. I took the sunshine now to turn my skies to blue. I don't need anything but you. Yesterday was plain awful. You can say that again. richer than Midas, but nothing on earth could ever divide us. And if tomorrow I'm in apple cellar too, I don't need anything, anything, anything. I don't need anything but you. Excuse us, folks. Charlie, look, there's our Annie. Who are you? Honey, we're your mom and dad. Mudge is the name, Ralph Mudge. And here's the wife, Shirley. And you were Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? We loved you, Annie, but we had to leave you behind. We've seen a great number of people. I expect you'll be wanting proof of who we are. Here's our driver's license and her birth certificate. Baby girl, name Anne Elizabeth Mudge, born to Ralph and Shirley Mudge, New York, New York, October 28th, 1922. October 28th? That's my birthday. Ralph, look, Annie's wearing the locket. When we left you at the orphanage, we left half a silver locket with you and kept the other half. It fits perfectly. Oh, thank God, Ralph, she's our Annie. Mr. Mudge, what about the money? Well, we ain't got much, but we'd be glad to give you whatever. You haven't heard that I've offered a certified check for $50,000 to anyone who can prove they're Annie's parents? No, sir. Anyway, we don't want no money. <laughs> Ralph, on the other hand, remember that little pig farm out in New Jersey? With $50,000, we could afford to bring Annie up right in the country. How about you come back tomorrow, Christmas, and then you can pick up Annie and the check. Bye, Annie. Love. Until tomorrow morning. Then you'll be spending the rest of your life with us. Oops. Pardon me, Blondie. Merry Christmas. Well, this is... Wonderful news. Drake. Yes, sir. Champagne. Yes, because sir. Because we've just heard the most wonderful news in the world. Annie has found her mother and father. I propose a toast. To Annie Mudge. To Annie Mudge. <laughs> Annie! I've lost her. I've lost Annie. Sir, I have the strangest feeling that I've seen that Mr. Mudge before, and that he's not who he says he is. Then we won't give up till we're certain. But how? We'll go straight to the top, to the President of the United States, even if he is a Democrat.
Christmas, Miss Dorbux. Miss Farrell. You're up early. You're up early, too. We've been up all night, dear. FBI men coming and going. Did you know the President of the United States is here? Really? Mr. President? Merry Christmas, President Roosevelt. Merry Christmas, Annie. Annie, earlier this morning, FBI Director Hoover telephoned me with some very sad news. He succeeded in tracing the identity of your parents. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Mudge? No, dear, David and Margaret Bennett. But... Annie. Annie, your mother and father passed away a long time ago. You mean I'm an orphan after all? Are you okay, Annie? Yes, because I know they love me, and they would have come back for me if they weren't. I love you, Annie Bennett. And I love you too. Now who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? The birth certificate could easily have been forged, but no one knew where the locket except us. And the FBI, of course. And Miss Hannigan. And, and Miss Hannigan. Miss Hannigan, sir, I'm a student from the orphanage. Hi, kids! Hi! Hi. Ah, it's delightful to meet you, Miss Hannigan. Same's here. I'd know you anywhere. Let me introduce you to everyone here. Of course, you know my secretary, Miss Farrell, yeah. and the President of the United States. Um, and this is my butler, Drake. Look, kids, there's presents here for all of us. Mr. and Mrs. Smudge. Good morning. Merry Christmas, one and all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Well, we don't want to bother you on Christmas and all. We just came to pick up Annie and the check. Ah, uh, of course. The check. Here it is. $50,000. Certified. Certified. Paid to the order of the jig is up? That's right. The jig is up. Daniel Francis Hannigan, also known as... Rooster Hannigan, also known as Ralph Mudge, also known as Danny the Dip. Lewis, turn them over. Yes, sir. And I believe you'll find this woman as their accomplice. I've never seen these people until yesterday! Oh, come off it, Aggie. Annie! Annie! Tell them how nicely kind I always was to you! Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Hannigan, but remember the one thing you always taught me? Never tell a lie. Brett! Miss Hannigan is gone for good. Hooray! And you won't have to work anymore. Hooray! Yes, girls, for you and perhaps for all of us, this Christmas will be the beginning of a new life. A new deal. Hey. I quite like that. A new deal. So do I, Franklin. A new deal. The sun will come up tomorrow. Hit your bottom dollar.
All right, this is our final show, so we are going to honor our fifth graders. Fifth graders, come on out. I'm going to pass on the mic and let them tell you their names and their characters. Hi, I'm Elena, and I play Tessie, the girl who says, oh my goodness, a lot. Hi, I'm Annabelle Lawn, and I play Annie. Hi, I'm Gray Welch, and I play Mr. Warbucks. Hi, I'm Kara McDonald, and I play Willie, a.k.a. Shirley Mudge. All right, so we've honored our fifth graders, which is their last show with us. We also have one final person that we would like to honor today. I wrote it all down so that I could just read it robotically, because if I don't, I'll cry. <laughs> so for those of you who do not know her, Jessica Masters is the two. Why, why are you sitting down? Come here. <laughs> Jessica Masters is the true brawn and brains behind this program. I tell people all the time that we are both listed as directors, but she's really the director and I'm just here. <laughs> um, she's truly the backbone of this show. And as most people know by now, she's taken a job at Franklin County High School for next year. So this is her last performance with us. And I wanted to just take a minute to recognize her 12 years of tireless work. It is truly Herculean what she does. And I honestly don't yet know what the program will look like without her next year. This is still hard. <laughs> Jessica, while I'm heartbroken for what Westridge is losing in your job change, I'm thrilled for this new opportunity for you and the students and community at Franklin County have no idea yet how blessed they are to be gaining you. I'm also comforted in knowing that while I'll no longer be able to call you my coworker, I can still call you my friend. You've created amazing opportunities for so many students in your time here. Oh, I hate it when people do this. <laughs> and we've reached out to current and former cast families to do something to honor your time here. I know you've always said that you don't do this for recognition or for the gifts, but for the kids and for the love of the arts. So we thought that the best way to honor your time would be a donation to a local performing arts venue. So from your cast families past and present, a donation has been made in your name to support the Lexington Opera House, and your name with a note from us will be placed on a brass seat plaque on one of their seats forever. We love and appreciate you more than you can ever know, and we wish you all the best in your new job. Let's give Jessica Masters a round of applause. If you can't tell, these are those moments I hate. I, I prefer being behind the scenes on everything. I I'm not out. I don't like to come out in front of the, in, in the spotlight. Um, I prefer being the person behind the scenes. But um, I do want to say thank you very much. I have loved every bit of my 12 years doing this. And I'm going to very much miss this next year. Well, that's all. <laughs> all right, one more. This. I don't know how many this is. I've lost track. Um, Kristen, yeah, Kristen drugged me in here. I forget which show it was. She was like, I need special effects. What are you doing? Oh, we're doing a show. Really? I did, had no idea that they did these marvelous shows out here. So she drugged me out here from church, and we hold a bunch of lights out. And I saw what they had. And they had these marvelous kids, sets that I couldn't dream of when I was this age, and costumes beyond, like Broadway quality. And they had really poor lighting. And I was like, girl, we're gonna fix this next year. So I started working with those two um, many shows ago, and I have been absolutely honored to work with all of our technical team that's been here show after show after show. Uh, lots of alum, lots of alum are here. And I, it's, it's been an honor. And I wish you the best at my alma mater, high school. They'll open, open arms. They'll, they'll love you to death. This is for, from all the media and tech uh, folks. Oh, thank you. So 
so we'll now have the opportunity for people to come down and take pictures with cast members. Um, we're going to, we have some special things going on backstage for cast and more things for Jessica. So um, it may take a little longer to get your kiddo than usual today. So just be patient with us, please. So you can come take pictures now. Got any more wonderful news?